Hi, in this position the strong master Effingeller was white and he played some surprising move and won the game five or six moves later. Of course we are going to analyze this very soon, but first let's see how they got this position on the board. So Geller was playing as white and Portish was playing as black. The game was like e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop b5 and here we have every Lopez. Black is playing a6, Morphe variation, and then bishop a4, knight f6, white castles, bishop e7, and then rook e1 and b5. This is the main line in Re Lopez. There are thousands of masters games with this variation. Black is playing d6, then c3, very typical, wanting to play d4. Black castles, a3, and in this position, black has some options. There are some interesting and strong main lines here. For example, black can play here knight a5, wanting to play c5 very soon. And this is what they call Shigorian variation. Also, black can play here knight b8. This is what they call Breyer variation. And the idea is to relocate the knight over d7, and also clearing the line for the bishop over here. And the other important line in this position is side seth with bishop b7 with a normal development. Well, in the game, Portis is playing a6, which is a smith's love, another interesting line in this position for black. After a6, white is playing d4, and then rook e8, then knight d2, and then bishop f8. The bishop protects the king side now, and also is clearing the line for the rook, so the rook now is protecting the central pawn, and also is targeting e4 after some eventual trade here on d4. So knight f1, when the pawn is on c3, uh, this is a very typical idea to bring the knight to d2, and then you can bring it to f1, g3, so it's not going to be blocking the bishop on c1. So black is playing here, bishop b7, knight g3, the knight on g3 is very well, notice the knight is protecting the central pawn on e4, and also is looking at f5, sometimes at h5. In this position, the best move probably is something like knight a5, but instead of that, Portis is playing here queen d7, which is probably a little dubious. After this move, Geller is trading on e5. Something interesting about this setting in the center is that usually white doesn't want to trade because right now white has a better center. So if they trade, uh, there will be a symmetrical center here. So it's like accepting the, the position is going to be balanced in the center. So usually white does not uh, want to trade here and the same happens for, for black black doesn't want to trade, because if they trade they will be accepting two central pawns for white, which is obviously not good for black. So that's what happens when we have this setting in the middle of the board. Mm, we both want to keep the tension, we, wo we both want to increase the pressure in the center and try to force the enemy to trade. Here Geller is trading because uh, he found some interesting tactics idea and actually it's going to be uh, very interesting what is going to happen after this trade and it is related to the position of the queen on d7 so black takes with the pawn and then this is the idea knight h5 this is a very nice move um, the threat here is knight takes knight check removing the defender and then taking the queen on d7 black has some options here for example they can trade on d1 but after the trade White could trade here on f6 in between, and then they could take here on d1 with bishop or rook. And the position should be slightly better for white. They have a better pawn structure. Notice we broke the structure over here. And also there is a very nice square here on f5 for the knight. So in general, white is going to be slightly better in this endgame. So after knight h5, uh, another option is what happened in the game. Black is playing queen e7 protecting f6, also clearing the line maybe for the rook. But then Geller finds another very strong move and it is this idea knight h4. White is threatening knight f5, getting a great square for the knight and also when the queen moves, white could be trading here on f6, destroying the pawn structure 
in the castling so that would be a great position for white so black is forced here to capture on a5 notice that a move like rook d8 is not really working because white can just play the same another five and if black takes the queen then we check then we check again and then we take the rook on d1 so uh, white could be getting the exchange so after knight h4 uh, black is forced to trade on h5 of course queen takes h5 this is very well for white because now the queen is in a very active position and there is a very nice point of coincidence here on f7 after queen takes black is playing knight a5 which is a mistake probably a good move for black here was uh, knight d8 mm, wanting to play knight e6 maybe but instead of that black is playing knight a5 and this is the position we had at the beginning of the video here Geller played something very strong if you want you can pause the video and try to find it I will explain it right now the move Geller played here was the fantastic bishop g5 let's try to understand this move because right now black can capture this bishop with two different pieces after queen takes bishop what is going to have checkmate in two moves so after queen takes white can play queen f7 king goes to somewhere and then queen g8 that's checkmate so in the other line after bishop g5 if black captures with pawn then there is this nice move very strong knight g6 taking advantage of the pin here so the pawn cannot really capture the knight so after knight g6 white is threatening checkmate on h8 this is a made in net there's no way to escape out of this net so white is winning in this position so black will have to move the queen but also remember there is a threat on f7 so the queen cannot go anywhere the queen has only one square and that square is d7 so after queen d7 Geller continues with a very clear and also strong move rook a d1 just improving the rook and attacking the queen the only move for black one more time is going to be bishop d6 and well the next move for white I would like you to try to find it so if you want pause the video I will explain it right now Geller is playing here in this position the great sacrifice bishop takes h6 the idea of this sacrifice is to destroy the pawn structure in the king side uh, there is a question I see very often and it is how do I know when is the right moment to sacrifice there are some things that can help us with this question one of them if we have more pieces attacking than our opponent has defending for example here we have the bishop the queen the knight in very good positions but also for example the rooks can lift over the third rank and join the party here in the king side so I think we clearly have more pieces attacking than black has defending here also if you are creating a lot of weaknesses with the sacrifice as we are doing here for example after after pawn takes bishop which is the move Portish is playing in this game look at this all these squares are very weak so in general if you're attacking with a lot of pieces and you're creating many weaknesses then probably the sacrifice is going to be strong well after pawn takes bishop white is playing here queen g6 notice uh, the bishop is spinning one more time so black cannot take here black is playing king f8 and Geller is playing another very strong move here queen f6 of course he could take here on a6 and probably there are some ways to win but also we don't want the king uh, to go to the queen side we want to make sure the king is staying there so we have uh, all our pieces creating threats in that side of the board so queen f6 is very strong we're avoiding any kind of uh, flight over here but also we are threatening checkmate in two because now we have a very specific threat with knight g6 and queen h8 checkmate so after queen f6 black is playing here king g8 at this point there might be some ways to win but this move Geller is playing is really simple and at the same time very strong he's just playing rook e3 bringing the rook to the king side and this is just winning the game and Portage resigned here well uh, 
for example, if Black plays something like King H7, there are some ways to win, but Knight F5 is pretty simple. We are threatening checkmate, and after Rook G8, we just checkmate here on A6. The question for today: Do you sacrifice often in your games? Let me know in the comments. So this is the video I wanted to show you today. I hope you have enjoyed it and you have learned something new here. If it was like that, help my channel with some like. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, so you get notifications for my next videos. Never stop believing. See you in the next.